All right. Welcome, everybody, to the product update of today. Uh, I try to keep it short so that there's lots of time for questions. So today, I'll, oh, I can't change my slides. Oh, wait, there we go. Today, I'll talk about uh, the, some, like, two, two highlights of what is, what is new, uh, what is very cool, and some things that I've learned recently, uh, which might be interesting to you or not. Latest, we, I hired a new product manager. He is starting May 1st, so that's great. That's all for the product team uh, new so far. Cool stuff. Uh, in 10.6, we released CI CD for GitHub. And it's still rough in terms of user experience, but it works incredibly well. Meaning that once you set it up, so you have a repository on GitHub, you set it up, it works like magic. You're, you can do everything you want in GitHub. You can create a pull request, as it's called there, which is totally the wrong way to call it. And you just see the CI status appearing straight from GitLab CI. You can click on it. You go straight to the output of the CI. Very, very cool. Um, and the nice thing is I already heard from customers directly that this is something, or potential customers, that this is something they want. Because many people are stuck on a tool that their company chose, for instance, GitHub or Bitbucket. Uh, and they still want to be able to use GitLab CI. Uh, so this is a super big deal and uh, worthwhile sharing with all of you. Other thing, which I should mention for 10.6 that we released, is a single group board in Libre. Um, now, you might wonder, why do you call this audio? We have, as an organization, we built the product, we built GitLab. But at the same time, we have uh, a role of a steward to the open source project, right? The open source project is not owned by us. It's owned by everybody. It's open source. Uh, and we are just being a steward of that. And being a steward of an open source project means that we have to make sure that we continue to invest in it and it continues to stay good. Uh, and we need to think about that all the time. And our product managers all know this. Um, and so I was very happy that in 10.6, we did specifically for Libre, what we did is we created a feature that is not as expensive and as deep as the group level issue board we have in GitLab Premium, um, but it still gives some of that uh, power to everyone else that, that can't afford uh, GitLab Premium. So very excited about that, very important. Let's go over to 10.7. I only have one highlight for 10.7 because you'll hear in all these functional group updates from all the specifics. Um, this is a very big deal. So in 10.7, we're releasing single sign-on for GitLab.com. So in other words, it allows you that if you're a large organization and you have something like LDAP set up to actually use GitLab.com even with your own uh, single sign-on methods. So this is huge, as Rep appropriately says in the chat. Um, this means that basically any organization can just adopt GitLab.com and they don't have to run on-premise anymore. And running GitLab on-premise is fine, it's very easy, and it's very doable, but if you don't have to, why not just use GitLab.com? And this was one of the few things that were standing in the way. We spent a lot of time over the past, I think, 18 months, if not more, making sure that if you're using on-premise or .com, there's no real difference in terms of features. And this was one of the last things standing in its way. So this is still an early, uh, version of this, right? So it, 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 but it works and it will allow anyone to use this and we'll continue to invest in it and make sure that the cool features you get with this um, that you get if you are on premise, you all have on GitLab.com. So super big deal. And I wanted to highlight that because uh, I think many of you would agree that, you know, today 90, 99, 95% of our customers and of, of large enterprises run everything on premise. But in the future, in a few years, it's going to be 50 50, and then it's going to be 70 30. Um, so making sure that we are ready for that is incredibly important. And everyone works very hard with GitLab.com. And this is the stuff that the product team is worried about, and specifically Jeremy has been worrying a lot about. So I wanted to highlight that. Now, some things that I've learned recently. Last week, I was in London at the Cloud Expo, uh, which is this big conference. I spoke to a lot of customers, I spoke to a lot of influencers, whatever you want to call them, um, and a lot of colleagues, which was very great. And there's a few things I've learned. And, and I want to summarize in like two points, uh, which might or might not be interesting to you. First off, issues are popular. At GitLab, of course, we use issues and issue boards a lot. Uh, and so we don't know any better. But there's about, 
I, I counted the other day, I think there's about 1.3 billion different project management solutions. And nonetheless, GitLab's issues are incredibly popular. GitLab's issue boards are incredibly popular. I had so many people come up and tell me that they're switching away from the old project management solutions to GitLab issues. So anything we could do to improve this, and these are of course big things like epics, but also small quality of life improvements are very important and very loved by the community. Um, so this was nice to hear and I thought very exciting. It was two days ago, I was at the University of Porto and they were telling me that rather than using Jira or they used Pivotal Tracker before, now they started to use for all the internal projects GitLab issues. And they said it was a huge success and everyone loved it. Some people use GitLab issues together with a repository somewhere. Some, some people used all of GitLab. Very cool to hear. That, that ding was not by on purpose, but it, it did sound very nice. Um, Kubernetes, which is the way I was told by one of the creators of Kubernetes to pronounce it. So if you hear someone else pronounce it differently, I got it from the source. Kubernetes is huge. So you know that this is one of the fastest growing open source projects of all time. Um, and you know that we are betting very heavily on it, but with these kind of new technologies, what you usually think is that, well, there's a lot of people excited about it and a lot of people talking about it, but maybe not a lot of people actually using it. And when I say people, I mean large enterprises. Kubernetes is not like that. Everyone I spoke to is doing something with it. They are either in further stages than you would imagine of moving towards Kubernetes, they're exploring it heavily or they're investing heavily. I was expecting that most people would have something to say about it and I was still surprised with how big it is and what the immense interest and power behind this movement is. And this is a big deal because it validates our strategic choice to pursue this, right? Like we invest a lot of time, we want to make it very easy to integrate Kubernetes, deploy directly to it, et cetera. Um, and it seems to be actually as big or even bigger than we thought it was and many people think it is. And then the last one, and this one is important. Whenever you go to a conference, uh, together with GitLab, you know, we're standing there at the booth, you get two types of people roughly, right? You can separate two people. You have people that know GitLab and the people that come to the booth, they self-select, they love GitLab. So it feels very good. But then there's a large group of people that barely have any idea what GitLab is. Many people think it's part of GitHub, which is of course something we have to teach them about that it isn't. Um, but there's also just a lot of people that are not sure what it is that GitLab offers exactly, right? They might say, well, I am aware of GitLab, I've heard of it, but I'm, I don't know what they exactly offer. If you're not someone that frequents Hacker News and you're not someone that is you know, particularly involved in DevOps in, in the organization that you're working in, you might not know that GitLab has a CI component or even more than that, right? Um, there's still a lot to win in terms of mindshare, in terms of teaching people what we offer. And even if you think about in terms of what people are using today, you know, we live in a world where CI is a normal thing and, you know, doing everything in containers is the most normal. It's, it's old by now, right? Like I'm, I'm with my head at serverless. Um, and I spoke to many people that said, well, we want to adopt CI, but we're not that advanced yet. Uh, and these are all potential users, all potential customers, and we still have a lot to win there. So I thought it was good to always put it in your head that, you know, we, we might be thinking about what's happening in the future, but there's also a large, large group of uh, people that in organizations that still have to get to know GitLab at all and still have to learn how CI works and why you would, you know, put your CI definition and follow your repository. So, uh, and as a last reminder, GitLab 11, June 22nd, there's an issue, should be easy to find, uh, super big deal. But until then, we're still releasing uh, GitLab 10.7 and 10.8. So with that, uh, any questions? Uh, I'll check the chat first, but you can also speak up. Uh, let's see. Victor asks, anyone else think about Kill Bill when watching this FGU? It's because I like these colors. Larry asks, as a steward, what role do we play? How do projects features get selected? How does this work? And let me stop sharing so you can look at me. Um, what role we play? A very big role. Uh, we have to decide whether a feature lands in any particular tier. And we have elaborately documented this on our stewardship page. So I would 
urge you to check that out. It's about the kitlab.com slash stewardship. And there we describe the process that we used and the decision that we made. We get it wrong sometimes, but the nice thing is that if you get it wrong, you can always restore it. So um, we often bring things from a higher tier to a lower tier or even to Libra. Um, let's see. Elsha asks, why are issues so popular? Uh, it's a combination of a few things. We want issues to be flexible and easy to use. That is very hard to do if you also want to make a powerful issue tracker. So we try to find the combination between being opinionated, so offering tools that we think work best for you, while not putting the user in a situation where they're forced to go through particular workflows, or where you have the possibility to configure them in such a way that you're forced into a particular workflow. The balance is very hard to strike, but so far we've been managing to do that. So you, would, you could describe GitLab issues today as more advanced than what GitHub, for instance, offers, but much more flexible and open and free than what Jira offers. Um, and I think that is, that is the reason. The fact that it's in the same place where everyone else does all their work helps a lot, of course. Uh, Mark Bell gives a nice anecdote of a um, customer moving to Kubernetes in a big way. So that is very, very nice to hear. Brennan says, is there an issue open for making the GitHub integration for CI/CD work with GitHub Enterprise, not GitHub.com? I don't know if there's an issue open, but if we should, <laughs> we should open it. What we have in any way is that you can run it with any external repository. You just don't have the full integration set up. So I think for now it's just GitHub.com. Uh, there should be an issue for this anyway. And I think same for Bitbucket and others. Rep says, what big item are we expecting in 11.0 to go to a new release number? This causes pain in many large organizations that require all sorts of additional tests between major releases of product. Well, Rep, uh, we're still working on what we want to decide exactly in terms of big features. For us, the major reason to do a major release is so that we can get deprecations out of the way. We want the for instance, to deprecate an old API paths and a few other things. And a major release is the best occasion for this. Um, I hope that in terms of complete DevOps, like the first wave is, is uh, mostly done, which I think we will reach. Is, is, is June 22nd end of Q2? Because then we will. Yob, also to add, we had discussed when to release 11.0, so it was not in the peak summer vacation time or yeah. close to our summit. There was the yeah, other two yeah. situations. Yeah, yeah, this, this has to do with the timing. Thanks, uh, Ashish. Yeah, we don't want to release in a time when no one is actually paying attention to the news, or we are all at the summit, which uh, is tricky, of course. Um, and Mac says, plus one, my previous team switched to Trello boards because of the heavy configuration need in Jira to get started. Yeah, so this is a clear, competitor to us, right? We have GitLab issue boards and there's Trello, of course, now of Atlassian. Um, so we want to make issue boards better than Trello in every way. Um, and, and doing that will allow us to get those people as well. All right, still have 17 minutes for questions. Um, don't ask, did I buy a new TV? <laughs> I did, is it in the background? <laughs> so I'm in the middle of a move. So the whole house is full of boxes uh, and, and uh, uh, the new TV is ready to be moved, uh, moving on Friday and Thursday. Hey, Yob, I have a question. Um, oh. I have a customer that just bought a dot-com silver subscription, and I want to send them information on the upcoming SSO. I'm not finding it on the direction page. Is there an issue, or where do I find the information? Well, on? I apologize. It's not on the direction page. Jeremy will make sure that it ends up there within, within the time of the team call, uh, and he will also send you a link. If not him, I will. So you, you will get the information you need. Uh, John Woods, are there any thoughts on building a Jira GitLab importer for issues? Yes, there are thoughts. There's an issue and there's a plan. And I, I hope to do it earlier uh, rather than later. Uh, Victor will, will leave a link there who has uh, the, the exact plans laid out. There's some trickiness to building these kind of importers. If we wait, a little while with it, we might have more features that allow us to make uh, importing easier. If we do it immediately, then if we add additional features, we have to update the importer. So it's a bit of a balance, but we want to do it as soon as possible. 
Uh, one thing that we did actually in 10.5 is that, or was 10.6, is the ability to link an external issue tracker next to GitLab issues. So if you are in a project, you can link to Jira, and you can quick have a direct link to Jira, but because you also have GitLab issues there, uh, the transition becomes significantly easier. So that's one way that we try to reduce the need for and an, like go all at once report and rather make it more of a tr transition. I think someone said at the conference, I think it was Ralph that said, we should think about transitioning, not about migrating. So migrating sounds painful. And Victor, of course, supplies um, a million uh, links in the chat. And Drew says, major release is getting more frequent and as a result, I think less painful. I anticipate that 11.0 will be even more painless than 10.0, probably. Uh, and I think so too. The, the uh, Most releases of GitLab, the, the migrations have not been very painful. They used to be very painful in like six point something. Uh, nowadays, they are not very painful. Serian asks, what was the reason to go to 11.0? There's a few reasons. If you have major releases too far apart, you end up with a lot of stuff that you can't deprecate, right? You need to have a moment to deprecate these kind of releases. Um, so to have a regularity to it is a very good reason to have a major release. It gives us the opportunity to deprecate things. Uh, and because I wanted to do it in a near to short term, somewhere in, in, in this year, and preferably before we would do 10.10, .10, which doesn't look very good, um, this came out is the best time. And Josh says, because GitLab now goes up to 11, which is a very good reference. All right, three more seconds for any questions. Two, one. Oh, new guy question from Dan. Is there a single place online that lists all the past releases and their major themes? Uh, yes, about the gitlab.com slash releases. Uh, someone will leave a link. Thanks, Sid. All right, and now I have to start the three, three, countdown from three again. Three, two, one. All right, thanks, everybody. See you at the team call and otherwise in five weeks at the next functional group update.